Good day, good day, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Uh, we are going to be continuing in our Zombies series, taking a look today at the five-star legendary red heroine, Scarlet, the Air Force Zombie. There she is. Um, so Scarlet is available for summons, as we saw from the Zombie Outbreak Portal, which wraps around once every 12 weeks. Uh, the portal itself doesn't have the best odds. We can see there are no featured heroes, which means that the chances of getting a specific hero are insanely low. Uh, the portal odds are 1.2% for any of the legendary 5-star zombies, um, which means that if you were to do 100 summons in the portal, you would have roughly a 70% chance of getting any legendary zombie. Um, but if you're hunting for a specific one, you do only have a 10.3% chance to get that specific zombie hero. Um, so not the greatest odds. The zombie family itself and this portal, it does have something of a complicated past. Uh, originally, there were only four zombie heroes in the game, uh, and they were summonable characters only from uh, zombie badges, which you received from a spec op. Uh, in 2021, SGG overhauled the entire thing around the zombies, and they basically pulled those four heroes out, um, added to them, added them to the zombie portal we have today, um, and then also threw in 14 other zombies alongside them with the 30 stage event we have now um the portal was expanded a couple more times in september 2022 and then in a, an update in march 2023 so scarlet herself she was part of that 2021 overhaul that they did um so she's been around for a little bit now her artwork uh, i am going to switch over to my roster and bear with me for a second she's recon class there she is or well, there's a copy of her. So there's the artwork. So she's titled the Air Force Zombie. So she's got the jetpack with uh, like these minigun things on her on her shoulders. Uh, unlike um, Lumi, who we was the most recent hero with the jetpack, Scarlet is actually still holding on to uh, the jetpack. So she's not going to be crash landing anytime soon. Um, does give me some like vibes from like I guess Hyperion. Uh, I don't know if anyone's read that book by Dan Simmons. Uh, this is sort of what I have in my head for the I guess big bad in that that movie. So or that book series. So anyway, this is Scarlet. Uh, feel free to pause it if you so choose, and uh, otherwise we will continue on checking out her card. So. Um, I did mention about the fact that she is a member of the Zombies family, uh, so that means that they have basically a passive 50% reduction to turn-based status ailments uh, or status effects such as, you know, burn, bleed, blaze, toxic, all that sort of stuff. There's also a plus 369 or 12% uh, increase to their attack stats if there is two, three, four, or five unique zombie heroes in a battle. Uh, note that they do have to be unique heroes, so you can't bring along two copies of Scarlet, because um, that would be absolutely busted. But anyway, it's got to be two different heroes, such as like Scarlet and Barbed Wire, or Scarlet and Shocker, for example. In terms of her personal stats, Scarlet comes in with 623 attack, 726 defense, and 1490 HP. So there is a skewing away from her attack stat towards the defense and HP um, for a hero of this age. Um, her charge speed is set to 48, which is average speed. Uh, this requires 11 tiles to charge or six ghosted tiles. To get a speed break, you do need to go up plus two uh, to get to 50 speed, uh, but you can do that really easily. Like any of the speed guns in the game can do it. Um, and I believe that the class node can do it as well. Hang on a second while I check that. Apologies, um, I miswrote down something on my, my script, so hence a little bit off the cuff, but no. Um, so the class node cannot do a single speed break. So you can do it though with any of the weapons in the game. Like there's the four star gun, which gives plus seven, and there's also the five star guns, which give plus nine. Um, a double speed break does require plus 10. You have to get up to 58 speed, uh, which you obviously can't do with speed guns alone because you need to get the, um, the best gun available is the plus nine, which is either the Firewing Trig or the Chekhov SVK. However, you can get there if you take the class node and combine it with the plus nine speed gun. So there is potentially some benefit to the class node um, at node eight on her tree. Um, yeah, some benefit, but we'll discuss that a little bit later. But yeah, 
If you're wanting to get the double break, you can do it, but otherwise um, a single break is doable with any of the speed weapons in the game. On the topic of class, uh, Scarlet is a member of the Recon class here, um, which means that she has a chance to evade direct damage coming from special skills and provide a 20% charge bonus on each successful evasion. So the Recon perk is probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, it does give an a a discreet chance to dodge damage on top of weapons and buffs and such. Um, it also goes and provides bonus charge for each successful evasion. So I do like this talent. It is quite clutch at times, um, but you will always take any status ailments or any effects from the special skill. It only evades the damage. Um, by way of an emblem path, uh, I would probably be going a defense, well, <laughs> An argument can be made to go either way, right? You can either go an attack path um, to enhance her damage output, or you can go a defense and HP path to give her additional survival. So for me personally, on my Scarlet, I went the attack path because I have just a personal preference towards making my heroes hit harder, um, but an equal argument can be made to go for a defense HP route. So for me, I went, you know, I picked up the attack nodes. I did grab the speed node, um, here so I can get that double break if I so choose um, and then I did go and keep picking up attack nodes the whole way down you can see there that I went to plus 19 um, and picked up that extra node on the bottom um, for some additional defense didn't go to plus 20 because the crit node doesn't do anything um, really for Scarlet if you were to go a defense and HP route it would look something more like this um, you'd still pick up the speed node so you can double break if you want um, and then you'd keep going and picking up defense and HP at each turn and again stopping at plus 19. You wouldn't go any further than 19 for that one. So yeah, uh, either case, as I said, the two emblem paths are both viable. Um, and yeah, worth going and pushing some emblems onto her skill. Heading back over to the portal and we can take a look at the rest of her skill. Um, so her skill is titled death from above and at level 10 skill and 49 charge speed it will deal 136 damage to all enemies at the end of each turn for three turns it will also apply a plus 16 percent dodge buff to the caster for three turns so breaking that apart a little bit uh, we might as well start with the damage component um, even though the damage is a little bit different in the case of scarlet um, but yeah so Damage itself, it's hard to reliably calculate because there is a random factor in it. Uh, there's also a lot of variables such as defense stats and that. So what we can do, which is kind of analogous, analogous to the damage output, is we can calculate a hero's attack power. So attack power is just you take their attack stat, multiply it by the percentage in their special skill, and we can see on Scarlet, there's kind of three options here, all right? So this is where she gets a little bit interesting. So each of her casts we just look at that bottom line there so she got 623 attack 136 percent uh, on her skill which comes out an attack power of 847. normalizing that against the 11 tiles to charge her skill and it comes in at 77 attack power per tile this is where it's a little bit interesting because in the instance where Scarlet casts all three of effects, she is actually far and away the best DOA 5 hitter in the game. It's not just in red, it's better than anyone else in the game. It does drop off a bit when there's only two casts, but she is still up there amongst the best DOA 5 hitters, all right? So we can see there, with all three hits, it comes in at 231 attack power per tile. On two hits, it comes in at 154. And when you get really unlucky and there's only one hit, it's only 77 attack power per tile. So I should probably ex address this a little bit um, more at this point. So unlike all these other DOA 5 hitters, Scarlet doesn't have any immediate direct damage in her skill. All of her damage output is actually tied to a buff, which means that there's no way to actually guarantee that you're going to get three turns of damage off because it can be removed. It can be removed a couple different ways. So the most obvious way is if she dies, all right? Her stats do lend her some additional survivability um, and there is that little bit of um, interplay with the dodge effect. But, you know, if she dies, you don't get any more damage. You can also remove it with like a dispelling effect um, or from the demolitions talent. Both of those will knock it out. And then there's also the scenario where it can the buff can be stolen by heroes like Krampus or, um, or Flo. 
You can also block the buff um, from being placed on her with the likes of, you know, Flow or Jainsaw. But yeah, the dodge buff does go quite a ways towards negating all of these um, possibilities. But yeah, so I, 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 as much as it is awesome when it's 231 attack power per tile for that three hits, there is always the chance when you're using her that you're not going to get the three hits. In an attack situation, this is way less likely to happen, right? Because you've got a lot more control over what's happening in attack. On a defense team, it's really easy to negate Scarlet by simply just bringing along, you know, a hero that does dispel. Like, you know, you bring... Who's an example? Uh, Panzer... Uh, no, not Panzer. Pantera, if you bring Pantera along, or even uh, Variant Throttle, right? Either of those two heroes, they dispel all buffs from the enemy team, all right? So... It is just something to bear in mind, I guess, when you're attacking. Um, there is also a couple of weird things with Scarlet's um, damage output, which I want to highlight. So bear in mind that both of these things, they're quite unquote working as intended by small giant games, but I think they're still a bit silly and weird nonetheless. So the first thing that I want to sort of go over as a little bit of a hinkier thing is that Scarlet doesn't apply the master weapons effect. So I don't really agree with this decision but small giant games elected that because scarlet doesn't apply her damage um directly but it's from a buff that she wouldn't apply the master weapon quest effect they've since made some adjustments to some of the wording in the game to kind of reinforce this so like they added this little question mark additional information on scarlet's uh, skill and they also have reworded the master weapon guns um, to say something to the effect of hit by damaging special attack um, whereas it used to just some say something like hit enemies get the effect all right so that's the first thing now bear that in mind for this second thing so SGG have already said it's not direct damage all right it's damage that comes from a buff all right the second weird thing is that Scarlet's damage isn't actually classed as turn-based damage. In spite of it literally proccing at the end of every turn, it's not turn-based damage, which means that it's not enhanced by turn-based damage buffs like what you have on someone like Mastodon or Whipster, and it's also, known, also not reduced by the zombie family bonus. So why I find this really stupid is because there's... SGG have put shock ailment for some reason as a turn-based damage effect. There is no link whatsoever to turn-based damage, mind you. It's a damage which is triggered by the application of a buff, something that may or may not happen. By comparison, Scarlet's buff literally executes every turn. The same as a damage over time effect, like burn or bleed or whatever, but for whatever reason, Scarlet isn't classed as turn-based damage, so yeah go figure personally i think both of these situations they're times where sgg took the easy or the lazy route where rather than actually fixing a problem they just went the route of saying eh, that's working as intended so yeah just two weird things that i've found with scarlet uh because i do use her a lot i do i do really like using scarlet so anyway i need to move on from that because it annoys me every time i start discussing it um <laughs> with anyone anytime the last part of Scarlet's effect is this application of a self um, dodge buff. All right, so we know everyone knows a lot about dodge, right? Everyone knows how effective it can be. Um, I won't say too much about it because it's so prevalent in the game, but I just don't want to make two points. Number one, 16% is pretty standard, right? It's common to most heroes who give out a dodge buff to themselves or allies. It's the same as what you get on the five star dodge weapons by and large. Um, so it is a pretty standard buff. The second thing that I want to highlight is that the presence of the dodge buff actually goes a long way to maintaining her damage output, right? Because it goes a long way to ensuring that it can't be removed by things like tiles or special skills, which would, you know, dispel or block or steal the effect. Because if you then further do it by equipping the Dark Flame Talon weapon to her or the mainframe 9mm gun, both of which give a 16 or an 11% uh, dodge buff, you're further enhancing that likelihood of dodging any effect which might remove her her damage over time or her whatever it is her <laughs> her damage buff um, as I need to call it. But so yeah, the point is that dodge will help you ensure that 
all three turns of damage are executed. So overall, um, my summary of Scarlet is I really like her. All right, I really, really do. She's she is a lot of fun to play with, um, particularly when you combine her with someone like a combination of like Bun Blunderbuss and Rudolph. The damage output becomes like actually insane. It does like 600 damage every turn for three turns. All right. If you don't believe me about how awesome Scarlet can be in an attack team, just check out a video. I put it up on my channel. It's called Scintillating Scarlet. I, I show off just how effective she can be in the raid arena, and I've included a link to that video in the description of this one. Um, so yeah, as I said, really, really fun hero. So much damage output. The only downside to Scarlet is that there's no secondary or effect uh, or ailments that she gives to her enemies, but with her raw damage output, if you get all three turns, I really don't think she needs anything more. Um, so yeah, for Scarlet's grading, I am going to give her a B plus on war and raid attacks. The only reason I'm not giving her higher is because to really, really shine and to do like insane amounts of damage, it does sort of still rely on that pairing with Blunderbuss and Elemental Defense down sort of thing. She is still really workable on her own, but you know, Team Synergy goes a long way to making her insane levels. Uh, for War Machines, I'm going to drop her down to a C grade uh, because she's not great on War Machine settings. Um, for Events, I'm going to give her a B grade. Uh, the reason this is higher is because typically you're going to bring along Blunderbuss and Elemental Defense down if it's available. So her damage output is really great at clearing both the waves and also chipping away at that boss HP bar. Um, for War and Raid Defenses, uh, I'm only going to give her a C grade. Uh, she is... She's okay in the wing position if she can hide and charge and get some damage off, but again, she's not... She she was good a long time ago when she was first released, not so much anymore in, in the current era of, of heroes. For tournaments, uh, in the Bloody Battle tournaments, I'm going to give her a B plus for attack and a C grade for defense. Um, in buff boosters, I'm going to give her an A- minus for attack and a C grade for defense. Uh, the reason she gets a little bit of an improvement on the attack situation is because she does give herself two buffs, which will further enhance her damage output. And also, because the damage is delayed from the time of casting, all of the hits will actually benefit from the buff booster tournament rule, um, which is a little bit interesting. Um, and then in charged attacks, I'm going to knock her up to an A grade for attack and a B minus for defense. And that's because she gets a charge improvement from 48 up to 65. So overall for Scarlet's grading, that comes in at a B grade for attack and a C grade for her defense. And that concludes the content for this review of Scarlet. Uh, as always, these are just my personal opinions. Uh, I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback on these heroes. So please jump down to the comments section of this video. Um, yeah, leave me a note. I love reading them. I'll try to reply to you as try to reply to as many of you as possible. If you did enjoy this video and found it to be useful, you know, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel and all of that. But most importantly, share these videos around to your ally mates because chances are if it was useful for yourself, it's also going to be useful to the people that you play with as well. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in and joining me for this review. I do hope that I will see you again soon. But until then, good luck, stay safe and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.